Welcome everybody. So I'm going to do a demonstration of how to install Easy Drive on your too big hard drive for your old 486 machine like I have here. But right now I already got Easy Drive installed on the drive that I'm using for my demonstration here and I'm going to show you if you wanted to remove Easy Drive here are the steps, okay? You want to use, I think I got F disk on here, yep, F disk, MBR, slash MBR. Run that, and then I'm going to switch disks. Should be able to run. Normally, I just let this boot itself, but let's see here. I can see the DOS setup. All right, we'll reboot. But you do the F disk slash MBR, and that's supposed to like clear the data out of the hard drive where it stores Easy Drive. So Easy Drive has it has an uninstall thing. I'm I'm going to show that momentarily. But sometimes it doesn't always grab, and you have to do the F disk slash MBR, and that will clear it out. And then you run then you run the program again, and then you should be able to fully uninstall it. So well, I'm going to go under Advanced Options, go Easy BIOS Setup. You got to turn this to disabled okay and then you go uninstall easy bios okay so you gotta save that exit exit restart and then you just you just boot up the easy drive boot disk again and then it should be all uninstalled then So the situation here, now, now what's funny is the system setup on this machine right now, the hard drive, the, the, seat, the cylinder head sector settings, they're actually set up for my 4.3 gigabyte drive, and this is just a one gigabyte, which means what goes on in the BIOS doesn't mean anything where I'm at right now. Someone asked a question about what you do in this situation why why when you run f disk why is it only using you know like half of the drive or something like that or a third of the drive whatever whatever their limitation was on their machine all right now we we really want to uninstall it and it has been uninstalled i'm gonna take the disk out we're gonna reboot it but anyway um this machine has a 504 megabyte limit on it. So if you go to create a partition in FDisk, even though in the system setup it says that it's a one gigabyte drive, it, it just can't translate somehow. So you can see here, All of my files that were on the hard drive <laughs> remain intact. So now we're going to put the easy drive disk back in. I'm just giving you the, the full demonstration here. So what's handy about Easy Drive is it actually has a, a super fast format. <laughs> you don't have to use DOS format when you set this up. Let's see here. 
Now, what I did before, all this stuff, you shouldn't have to do that again. So if you want to install Easy Drive, you use the fully automatic install and it gives you this warning here, it tells you all your stuff on your hard drive, it's gonna delete it. And you have to manually type yes to confirm. And as you can see by the error message here, it says your system BIOS does not support this hard drive. I would need like a 540 megabyte hard drive or smaller. I actually, I think those formats are like what, 513 or something like that. Anyway, um, so it's gonna use your full capacity. So I'm gonna have a one gigabyte drive. Here, let's hit F1 for BIOS limits. I don't even know if this file's on here, I don't remember. Okay. So, if you had a 528 megabyte drive, I think it would format as a 504 or something like that. But, here's the common limitations. Probably Pentium 1 era, you'd be there. Maybe later Pentium 1, you'd be there. I don't know. Unless, of course, your BIOS supports LBA, large, large block addressing, right? In which case, it can just figure it out on its own. Okay, so now it's going to prompt you for your system disk. So that, that's my, where am I at? Here's my DOS 622 boot disk. And the reason why it's asking for that is because it is actually going to copy the system files off of that. So command.com, io.sys, msdos.sys, it's gonna copy those files off of that floppy disk onto this new partition that it's going to create. So you can see 1,088 megabytes. Uh, we're gonna use that partition size. If you use enter new partition sizes, there's, config there's different configurations you can do. You can use like, four 250 megabyte partitions or something silly and, and there'd be like a fifth eight megabyte partition it's silly you don't want to do that so we're going to use that that's going to partition and format really fast here it is you can see it's copying the files there's io.sys msdos.sys and command.com so all your msdos it, it, it's formatted already i mean look at that how did it do that? I don't know. So we're going to hit escape. I'm, cur I'm curious if, if DOS will boot up here. I'm curious. So I modified my boot disk. It's actually got CD-ROM drivers built in that load from it. So this is going to prompt you to install your operating system. So I'm gonna put this boot disk in. I already got my DOS CD in here. Now, there is another overlay program like this. It's called the OnTrack Disk Manager. That one actually has CD boot capability built in. That's the only thing that is kind of not cool about Easy Drive, but there's less nonsense with it, I think. I don't, I don't know why I settled on using Easy Drive, but so it's going to boot off of my disk here. I'm going to install MS-DOS, hopefully. Mine is not an upgrade disk, so it might yell at me. Just to confirm, that's DOS setup. Sometimes it'll tell you that you already have an operating system installed, but this might give me the op upgrade prompt. Place your current version of DOS. I think bef previously the only boot disk that I could get to work was Windows 98. I made that with my Pentium 3 machine because all of the disk images, all the boot disk images that exist on uh, WinWorldPC.com, they don't boot in either machine. So I can't even blame the 486 machine. It doesn't boot in the Pentium 3 either. So I have to basically make, I have to use like the sys command to create my DOS boot disk, which is what I did here. 
Um, the workaround that I used, in case you, this is your only option if you have to use Windows 98, make sure that you change the, um, the attributes on the, on the io.sys and msdos.sys files. Make sure that you change them to where they're not hidden or uh, system files so that you can delete them. You might be able to delete everything using Deltree. I didn't do all that. So, so we're gonna install MS-DOS. Just give you the full flavor experience here of the easy drive installation process. Need to find some DOS games to play on this thing, some old stuff. Probably like Maniac Mansion or something like that. What do you think? All right, scan disk. It made a beep. Take the disk out, hit enter to reboot. That's it. That's easy drive. What do you think? It's pretty simple enough. As you saw on the splash screen, it said Western Digital on it. Um, I think that came with Western Digital drives. I I had the luxury like 20 some odd years ago that I never needed to use that thing. All, of, all the computers that I installed Western Digital drives on, they all just happened to work. But this was this was a very enlightening experience doing this uh, this build here. I had a lot of stress and aggravation from it, but it was also fun and educational in its own way. So, so hopefully you can use these instructions, and they will help you uh, with your capacity limits on your hard drives. All right, thank you.